Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make... So in this episode, we're gonna learn how to use a vocoder and a synthesizer to use your voice to make these cool robotic sounds. Follow me. What's a vocoder anyway? A vocoder is a special processor that takes two inputs, a carrier and a modulator. Then it analyzes the frequency response of the modulator and it applies filtering to imprint the EQ shape of the modulator onto the carrier and then it returns that. So, if you take a saw wave carrier, which has all the harmonics, odd and even, and then put something like Whoa, whoa, whoa. As the modulator, you're gonna hear something that is the saw wave, but doing the oh, whoa, whoa sound. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Referring to a previous episode about formants, it's a way to sample formants from one sound and put them on another sound. Usually we sample the formants from our voice and put them onto a synthesizer sound. A quick note, who made vocoders and why? The vocoder name stands for voice encoder. It was created to enable transmitting encrypted speech recordings, way before the digital age, where we could just record a sound file, encrypt the sound file, send it, and we have encrypted sound. So the idea was that you separate the formant information that carries the meaning of the words we say, you separate that from the tone of your voice, and you encode this in a separate bands. So you, you, you basically split the sound in multiple frequency ranges, and then you put envelope followers that note the loudness of each band. Then these numbers are written down they are encrypted, they are sent over, and then anybody turns on a synthesizer and uses filters that recreate the formants based on the numbers received and effectively recreate the speech. Of course, in a weirdly robotic way, but totally understandable. Enough history. There are two main open source vocoder plugins that I used. First is the Tau vocoder which is very nice for quick and simple way because it has a built-in synthesizer. So you can quickly dial in a synthesized tone as your carrier and then simply plug in a MIDI controller or a MIDI track to supply the notes for the synthesizer, plug in your voice and you can go. But, 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 but there are some other options like MDA Talkbox, which is a high quality but a very simple in use vocoder. MDA Talkbox. Is a simple but high quality vocoder. You can change the quality settings to change the amount of bands. Now it's low. Now it was low quality. Take a look at the spectrogram. It's very nice. So, MDA talk box is a very interesting. Oh, meant to emulate the sound of physical talk boxes, but that's a different topic. So today we're going to take the longer but more flexible route of using Calf Vocoder, which is my personal favorite vocoder plugin. We're going to use the newest version that can be downloaded and built from source from GitHub, but also that can be downloaded from Calf Git package from Cake Studio repositories. If you don't know what these are, there is a previous episode that talks about the Cake Studio repositories and you can install these. Okay, let's get making sounds. Here is our Ardor 5 session. I have already created three tracks. The vocoder track, which is a stereo audio bus. That means it will process stereo sound from the input to the output all the time. And we're going to put our vocoder plugin in here. I'm gonna do it right now. If you don't have this plugin in your favorites, you, you right click here, Go to New Plugin, Plugin Manager, and then you type Calf Vocoder. You can double click and then 
hit insert plugin. And this is what Calvocator looks like. I'm not going to talk much about what happens right here, because it's much more interesting when we have sounds to hear what, we, what we're doing. Two notable changes to the, to the stable version of this plugin is that it now allows for sharper Q values for the filter, so you can have very awesome sharp sounds. And there's also another feature that I asked to be implemented that is manipulating the distribution of the filters. You can rise the lower limit, lower the upper limit, and you can do tilt. That means pushing the more bands toward the higher frequencies or the lower. The cool thing is that you can automate this and get some really cool sounds out of it. Let's close this plugin for now and set up the rest of our tracks. Below the vocoder bus, I have a carrier MIDI track. I call this carrier. This is going to be the source of the synthesizer sound that I'm going to shape with the formants of my speech. I have inserted a Helm synthesizer and it has its default basic patch. I'm just going to disable the second oscillator so we have just one salt of wave and I'm gonna leave it as that. Very simple, nothing special. I'm going to connect my MIDI keyboard and enable the record mode. It works. Now the modulator is going to be my voice. So I have the microphone input one selected already. If I enable now, you probably will hear me double. Now we need to do the routing. So both of these tracks are going to go to the bus. However, the bus is only stereo and we need to put there four inputs because stereo output from the carrier and stereo output from the modulator. Of course, uh, this one is practically mono, but you can record, you know, like a choir or several vocals, put them into a bus and then route that bus as the modulator for the vocoder. That doesn't make very much sense because it's only going to smear out your result and make it less obvious to what's happening, but you can do this. Or you can record your vocal in stereo. So I'm going to disable the output on the bottom of the mixer strip. I click on the master and go disconnect and here we have the dash that means there nothing is connected to the output of this track. That's modulator, the carrier, I'm going to do the same. Disconnect. Now I'm going to the vocoder bus. I'm going for the input, routing grid. I'm going to switch to the ardor tracks tab. And here is carrier out. Let's put one dot here and one dot here. That connects the carrier out left to the vocoder in left and carrier out right to the vocoder in right. I'm going to close this. The connections are already done. Now if I play the carrier, you can see that the notes are in, but because we have this call vocoder plugin here, nothing will make a sound until we plug in the modulator. So I'm going to right click on this plugin and go for pin connections because we need to enable the sidechain input. Now it's enabled, now I choose my track, it's the modulator, and now I just root the audio. So now the carrier, that synthesizer sound, is coming in for inputs one and two, and the modulator, my voice, is going for inputs three and four. I can close this. Now if I open the call vocoder, ah, uh, ah, uh, we should be able to hear something. It is, however, very quiet because the mic input is very quiet. So I'm going to mute my mic input. I'm going to make this louder and you will hear the vocoding. Okay, so that's a quick demonstration. Uh, the problem is, uh, I'm getting feedback from the monitor, so I'm going to use headphones for this to get a cleaner sound. Okay, right now I have disabled the monitors, and I will disable the voice recording and listening in.
All right, for that quick demonstration, I think I'm going to change the framing so we can see my keyboard as I uh, play the notes, because that's quite important, I think. Yep, having two cameras would be great for this kind of stuff. All right, so now you can see my face and you can see my hands as I play. That's gonna make it a little bit simpler, I guess. All right, so let's talk about what the vocoder is doing. Right now, I'm going to pan the vocoder to the right so you can easily hear the difference between the vocoder and my voice. I figured out that uh, actually using vocoder with a whisper is the most effective thing because otherwise the tone of the note that you say or sing like ha it clashes with the tone of the carrier synth and it emphasizes some harmonics that you don't really want but if you just go with a whisper like then you're creating a noise-based sound that isn't emphasizing any particular harmonics it's just allowing the format of your voice to be clearly audible and sampled by the vocoder what am i doing here what am i doing here what am i doing here oh what am i doing here now 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 what am i doing so yeah a whispering is much more effective so this is our basic vocoder sound and now let's try to make it a little bit more interesting. Wow, wow. The first thing is I would use a gate on the modulator so we don't have notes when there shouldn't be no notes. Because if I press a key, right, I just have the gate. If I disable the gate and press a key, you can hear a very silent buzz of the synthesizer. We don't want this to happen unless I really sang something or said something. Like, wow, wow. All right, so if I put a gate, wow, wow. I need to, of course, put down the threshold. Wow, wow. And that basically gets uh, rid of that problem. We can also tune the release and attack and the ratio, but the default values seem to work pretty well in this case, so I'm not going to touch them. Also, a good thing is to apply compression before the vocoder, so I'm going to add a compressor to my modulator, which is my voice. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Woo! 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 Wow! Uh, you can see we're clipping sometimes in the vocoder, and that creates an unpleasant sound, so I'm gonna want to get rid of that with a compressor. Woo! Woo! And this is real weird. And we're not clipping on the mic preamp. We're not clipping. We're not clipping on the mic preamp. We're not clipping on the mic preamp. All right, so I'm going to just lower the threshold a little bit and make sure that, you know, we just don't cross a certain level. I think we need to tune the settings of our vocoder. Double click and open the GUI. Here it is. Ah, yeah, 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 wow. Wow. All right, so let's have fun and listen to what is happening in this vocoder. Uh, I'm actually applying quite a lot of gain to the modulator, as you can see, which might be causing the clipping. Yep. Now we don't have the clipping. Now, probably because I'm using high Q, we can hear that the filters are ringing. That means they, ex they excite so much that they continue to produce a tone when the exciting tone is already dead. Yeah, the good example is when I hit the low C. Uh, let's change the analyzer to Q. 
carrier. And you can see that with that node, I have a lot of energy right here. This is 100 hertz. This is probably like, yeah, this is probably 50 or 40. And if I change the modulator, this analyzer mode to modulator, we can see the shape of my voice. So that is effectively the sampled um, sound. Ah, woo! Yeah, I can wh whistle at 1K. But if I just blow into the mic, you have this kick drum-like sound, and you can see that even on these LEDs, that they, the sound starts on the whole spectrum and then it dies off and the lowest frequency resonates longer. Let's change the tilt and see if that affects it. A little bit. Yeah, it definitely rings longer, probably because more filters are stacking up because they are very close. So let's reset this to the default and also make this not high Q and less, less like that. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to whisper, 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 I'm go going to whisper, I'm going to whisper, I'm going to whisper, I'm going to whisper. Now I'm whispering very loudly. It's a very fun feeling when you start using a vocoder like that because you play and you whisper at the same time and you can create very interesting rhythmic patterns. And I really like the sound of the skull vocoder when it, it is at really high Q because it gives me the sound that I really like when people are using stuff like Vocodex and Fruity Loops. Um, it, it gives me this kind of sound. When I turn up the resonance to 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's quite quiet. I think I need to make it louder. Louder. Make it louder. I think I need to make it louder. We can make it louder. We can make it louder. Well, that immediately draws Daft Punk to your mind, because that's what they're using, a vocoder. All right, so let's take a look. We can choose the amount of bands we're splitting the signal, the carrier, into. The basic is the eight bands. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds very basic, it sounds very basic, it sounds very basic, it sounds very basic and robotic. <laughs> the more bands we have, the higher the resolution of our vocoding is. Going up to 12 bands. 8 bands, 12 bands, 16 bands, 24 bands, 32 bands. 32 bands is the highest resolution possible with Call of Coder. It's gonna give you the most accurate sound in the form of analysis and reproduction. So you can make the most awesome sound with your vocoder. Yeah, yeah. Pretty awesome, man. Huh? Pretty, pretty awesome, man. Huh? Funny thing is when you start to beatbox through the vocoder. Well, of course I need to turn down the modulator level. I'm going to make it all stereo. So I'm going to reset the panning and disable my voice. Okay, let's talk about more features of the vocoder. We're at the 32 bands. Now every band has some settings. We can change the level to change the overall balance of the EQ curve we have. I'm going to try to reset that. Oh, it's being carried on. Really nice. Is this a reset button? Uh, no, it's not. We need to make it louder. We need to make it louder. It's more or less the same as at the beginning. It's 
more or less the same as at the beginning. More or less the same. Now I'm pressing two notes that are very close and very low, so I'm creating kind of a reese. <sighs> Pretty nice. The cool thing, if you want to uh, accurately represent speech, we need to represent the sibilants. And for that, we have noise. We can add noise to the bands. Seven billion, seven billion, seven billion, billion. Six thousand, six, six thousand, six thousand, seven billion. We're using colorful color. We're adding noise to the signal. 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 Effectively adding noise to the signal. We're just changing. Later it recovers the performance. We can't, we're actually making kind of a by, bypass for the several bands. I'm not sure how to explain it, but the more noise, the more regular the sound is. Okay, right now let's play with the synthesizer itself to get this sound more interesting. The first thing I want to do is... Uh, yeah, make sure. Make sure we start with a clean slate, which is the single saw. Then I want to make this more voices and turn up the unison. Uh, yeah. Singing a song with a robot voice. The problem is this one is monophonic, so I'm going to turn up the voices to eight, maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, now we can play chords, 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 now we can play chords. I have a problem uh, that the carrier has too much low frequencies, sorry, the modulator, my voice, and that causes bad booms. So I'm going to insert a filter, calf filter, switch it to 36 decibels per octave high pass, Turn it down so it is kind of like 200 hertz. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, much better now. Now we cl we're clipping a bit. I'm going to insert a compressor after the vocoder. Another thing I want to do is play around with the modulation or with the timbre of the carrier tone, the synth sound itself. Let's try it. I want to use some modulation to make the sound sharper and more interesting. Let's use the sine wave and make it very sharp. Make it sharp, make it, make it sharp, make it high, make it pitch, make it high pitch, make it, make it high pitch, make it, make it high pitched. Make it, make it high pitched, make it, make it high pitched. Give it some motion, give it, give it motion, give it some motion, give it, give it motion, give it some motion. Okay, the tuning. Cut down on the detuning because it's gonna be ruining the sound. Get down on the detuning, get down on the get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down on the detuning. Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down on the detuning. Detuning, detuning, shitty detuning, yeah. Another thing I want to do is use the trick I showed you in a previous video with enable multiple with enabling multiple instances of Helm. So we get a wide stereo. And that sounds much more interesting. Much more interesting. Bo, bo. 
Let's turn it down and uh, pitch it down and listen what happens. Wow. Looney Tunes. I'm going to enable add some reverb and this time let's use Guitarix Zeta rever reverb which is one of the nicer sounding reverbs in the open source world out there. So it's GX for Guitarix Zeta Rev 1, which is Reverb 1. And there is no Reverb 2, so don't be confused by that. This is the sound of the Reverb. Zeta Reverb. Oh, oh yeah. Don't be confused by that. This is the sound of the Reverb. Zeta Reverb. Uh, the Zeta reverb is pretty interesting. It splits the sound in two bands. You can split it at frequency X, and then you have separate uh, reverb tail times for the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies. And then you have the damping, which is the lopus filter for the upper frequencies. So you can make it very tall, or you can make it very bright. Very nice and interesting sounds. Also, it has a two-band semi-parametric EQ because a parametric filter is the one that can select a frequency, the gain, and the width of the bell curve. So, you know, that's a parametric filter. These are semi-parametric because you can't change the quality of the filter, so the width of the bell shape. And I'm not going to go into the detail because that's not about this plugin. And we have vocoding. Okay, I think this is it for that tutorial. It was supposed to be quick and it is... Uh, I have 15 minutes recorded. Let's see how much will be cut off. Uh, you can download this session. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, you can play around with it, have fun. Make sure that you have... And also, if you're wondering about how to use the Helm synth, which is here, I have already two videos about it. Uh, about the older version and the newer version, so we can learn it. It's a very nice synthesizer. Uh, I really like it. I was, I'm was i using it more and more. The funny thing is, I started using it more after I recorded the first video. So I learned myself, and that's cool. I hope you're inspired. Get creative! Have fun! So, if you have any questions or suggestions for what I should cover in the next episodes, please leave them in the comments. If you feel thankful, you can buy me a coffee by paypal.me. Please consider supporting me on Patreon, which could eventually allow me to do this as a full-time job. Uh, that would be truly fantastic. I also want to make a shout out to Harry Van Haren from OpenAV, who is literally my patron from day one. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.